Hi, it's Smooth and Gadget. And I'm here in a Nokia Here car. We're gathering data. And John, the head of reality capture at Nokia, is here. This is the second generation technology uh, called Here True. And so we are in a Subaru right now. They also have uh, Jettas. And we're going to capture some data. So as you can see here, we have a surface that's capturing, uh, that's actually just the UI for the box that's down here that's capturing the data. Uh, it's, a, it's a new technology. You guys are using four different cameras, right, John? Yeah, it's a four new cameras, 16.2 megapixels per camera, uh, 64 megapixels in the entire array. So the, these uh, cameras came from the uh, Earthmine acquisition, which I was a part of. Right. We're getting much higher resolution imagery, much better quality imagery, better color fidelity, better dynamic range. So I think as this uh, imagery starts to roll out into our products, you'll see our street level imagery product will get drastically better. Um, so you have a new improved LiDAR sensor from Velodyne. It's smaller. We I do. Saw. It's the HDL32E. So it has 32 laser emitters which output 20,000 pulses per second per laser, 700,000 points per second. Right, and uh, you're capturing um, four views at 180 degrees that overlap, correct? Exactly, so you can see on the screen there the four uh, cameras we're capturing with 180 degree vertical field of view so we can get the full uh, seamless 360 degree panorama. Awesome. And uh, what else is new about this technology? I noticed that there's no more wheel sensor, for example. Yeah, no wheel sensor. We're using a very accurate uh, GPS and inertial measurement unit, so we don't need a, a wheel sensor anymore. It's also really easy to install compared to the previous generations. So right, so you just have this box down here in the passenger footwell. Yeah, so there's an x86 server running in that box, which uh -huh. controls, it's running Linux. It controls the uh, sensors, the three main sensors on the vehicle. It's connected to a wireless hotspot running on the Lumia 920, which <laughs> is also connected to the surface. So the surface is communicating to the control box via the Lumia 920. Right on. And then the Lumia 920 is sending updates to our remote servers about the status of the vehicle so we can use it for fleet tracking. And so basically you get the mass that installs on a standard Thule rack on the top. Uh, no more custom mounts or anything like that? Yeah, no custom mounts. We're deploying this in 27 countries across five continents this year. So it's a much wider deployment than we've ever done before. Right on. And we're down, just in case you guys are all wondering, we're driving around Berkeley here. And um, so basically any car can be turned into a Nokia here gathering car very quickly with this setup. Yeah. You don't really need anything that's attached to the car permanently. Exactly. In terms of uh, bolting anything on. Exactly. If you want to use rental cars, we can do that. It takes about 30 minutes of setup time using two people. So it makes it really versatile. Sweet. And on the surface there, I don't know, Luke, can you show the uh, navigation uh, routing system? Sure. So we, uh, our team creates routes that we send to the drivers that they then upload onto the surface. And then they uh, load the route and it activates and it gives you turn by turn directions. Uh, it's a program called Route PhD. You give them a shape file of a city or a county or anything really. and then the algorithms from Route PhD figure out the most efficient way to collect every road in that polygon and try to minimize repeating roads, driving over in the same direction, and do it as quickly as possible. Um, so it's different from point to point. Right? right, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, it's not like your car nav. You want to be able to avoid repeating data sets, et cetera. Exactly. Right? And, and we, making sure you don't miss any data sets. Exactly. We still get about 30% redundancy, uh -huh. we, meaning we drove a, a certain road twice, but that's about uh, the optimal redundancy you can get in this algorithm. And also tell us a little bit more about how the, the data, as you said, is gathered into the box. It's, but it's actually being stored on a one terabyte uh, hard drive, correct? Exactly. And that's just like removable, basically. Yeah, you can see the carrier there right in front of the uh, that green switch. So at the end of the day, if that uh, indicator on the surface is 100% or close to, the driver will pull it out, simply put it in a FedEx or UPS package and ship it to our data center for processing. Are you using SSDs or actually hard drives for this? They're regular SATA hard drives, one wow. terabyte SATA hard drives. Right on, and they're they're 3.5 inch basically? Yeah, 3.5 yeah. inch. Yeah. Are they, how are they doing with the shock and the motion? They're actually not bad. I think, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, located here in the, in the wheel well, you're not getting a lot of vibration. We haven't had any issues with the shock or vibration yet. Well, thanks so much, John, for giving us a quick tour of uh, the technology here in the in the car. Great. All right. Thanks, Mary. Cheers.